Welcome back, America. There's so many things going on in Washington. There's a lot of things you could miss. We'd want to make sure you didn't miss this one. Just a few hours ago, the Senate Judiciary Committee heard very important testimony from Sam Altman, who serves as the CEO of ChatGPT. That's the AI company. And I want to play a, a quick clip of his warning to Congress uh, if it isn't perfected and modified accordingly, meaning AI. If AI isn't perfected, quickly and modified, listen to what he had to say. Look, we, we have tried to be very clear about the magnitude of the risks here. Um, I, I think jobs and employment and what we're all going to do with our time really matters. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. But we, we try to be very clear eyed about what the downside case is and the work that we have to do to mitigate that. The downside case. Well, despite his general optimism for the advancement of AI technology, he says his worst fear is causing significant harm to the world. Now, joining us to talk about this hearing and the future of AI is Carl Sabo, and he serves as the vice president and general counsel for NetChoice, and he's also a professor at internet law at George Mason University, one of my favorite places. He's at the Scalia Law School. Carl, great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'd like you to just step back for a second and just analyze what Congress heard today. It's the first time that Congress had a really substantive AI discussion. Your top line takeaways. Yeah, the top line takeaway is we should all be scared when Congress is getting engaged. I mean, the nine <laughs> scariest words are, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. And what that's kind of what you heard today coming from a lot of Democrats. Democrats are out there saying, AI is scary. It's going to take away your jobs. Therefore, we need to regulate it. We need to control it. We need to decide what can and cannot be said on it. And this is not the first time we've heard this from Democrats across the board. We've heard Vice President Kamala Harris, who was made the border czar, and now she's probably going to be made the artificial intelligence czar, say, we need to make sure that there's diversity, equity, and inclusion in AI. With simultaneously, we heard lots of concerns about so-called deep fakes, as well as how this is ultimately going to destroy the world. Now, I have to disagree with a lot of what Sam Altman, the, the head of ChatGPT, said today, because let's remember, he has already built a successful large company. And one of his goals now is to make sure that no one can get in behind him. He wants to shut the door to competition, shut the door to other innovation. So we need to take everything he said with a couple grains of salt. But at the end of the day, the best way that we can develop this technology is the way America has always done it. Yeah. It is permissionless innovation. We don't outlaw innovation. We don't outlaw ruthless competition. But what we do outlaw are bad harms. So if we don't want to, for example, create the Terminator, you can pass a law saying no Terminators may be created. But by the same token, we're not going to ban a technology that can be used for so much good to help so many people across the world. Yeah, such an important point. Yeah, John's going to pass out from the shock of this, but I actually want to step away from the politics of, of all of this for just a moment, because I think that a lot of people see, you know, a lot of us have seen these transcripts of chat GPT conversations where you have a literal robot uh, getting disgruntled over a conversation and, and showing very real human emotions. And I saw some comments from a, a former tech guru, I think he's still kind of in the game, but at a symposium, Ben Gertzel, um, who has been involved in AI R&D since, since the early 2000s. And he talked about how he felt like in the coming future, very near future, 80% of jobs were going to be replaced. Stepping away from the politics for a moment, how dangerous is this for the world? Because I agree with you. I think that that testimony today should be taken with a grain of salt. But there also is this broader concern that, that humans get replaced. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. So is AI good or bad? Well, it's neither. It's a tool at the end of the day. I, I analogize it to a hammer. A hammer can be used to build a house. It can be used to break a window. But we don't outlaw hammers. We outlaw breaking of windows. Today, AI is a similar tool that's being used for incredible good. I'll give you a quick example. AI is being used to detect breast cancer better than doctors can. And that's because it can analyze millions and millions of uh, images and detect what are precancerous cells. And it can just do that at a scale that humans can't. That's an example where somebody like my mom who had breast cancer 
that's a life-saving tool. Same thing's true with uh, AI and sonograms to identify breach births before they happen. That's incredible tools of AI. And of course, we all say, that's great. We should love that. And then we start to worry about how AI is going to change our lives, perhaps in ways that we don't necessarily want. And the concern oftentimes comes into taking away our jobs. AI is not going to annihilate work. It's not going to destroy work. But what it will do is get rid of boring work. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, I, was, I was out in uh, San Francisco at the Google I.O. conference, and they were showing, let's presume you put together a PowerPoint deck, but you need to create speaker notes. Well, the AI can actually create the speaker notes for you. You know what? As a guy who teaches and uses PowerPoint decks all the time, that's one of those annoying things that I hate to do that will free up time for me to do stuff. And that's what we have always seen from technology throughout time. Uh, whether it is your stove at your house, your pressure cooker, your crock pot, it is freeing up time so that you can spend more of your life with your friends, family, or doing other things other than the boring work that we are tied to. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. Now, I will say you do raise an important point. I do have three guidelines that we should all follow, three guidelines, and they are transparency, accountability, and security. Transparency, let people know when something is AI generated, accountability, every existing law should apply to AI just like it does everything else, and security. When we put in personal information, sensitive information, business information, that needs to kept, be kept safe and secure and not used to retrain the model. So I think if we start with those three guidelines, we can actually escape a lot of the problems that we're seeing come down the pike. Carl, we just got about 30 seconds left. Real quickly, uh, there was an EO earlier this year by Joe Biden. He wants to make sure that AI has a diversity, equity, and inclusion plan, I guess. Your thought about trying to apply human things to AI? AI actually can uh, save us from a lot of the, the natural uh, prejudices that we, we always have. Like, you see somebody who's really tall, you think, wow, they're going to be a great basketball player. Uh, I'm not one of them. But <laughs> what AI can do is it can eliminate all that. It can look at us on the quality of our character and the merit of our work, not the color of our skin, not our height, not our race. And it will actually help produce some of the most equal outcomes so long as we don't try to eject things like DEI into it. That's a very big thought. That's something I got to think about more. I never thought of that until this that now. Carl, what a great honor to have you on. We enjoy all the work you do at George Mason University. We'll be sure to get you back on because AI is not going anywhere. Thanks for joining us, my friend. All right, folks, Thanks we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about big rigs, like in trucks, like in the effort to get rid of them in the name of carbon emissions. We'll talk about that right after this.